this chick took the kids. She could be on her way to New York right now. I was freaked out, dude. Yeah. I started calling my family, telling them what's going on. And they're all playing dumb, dude. Come to find out, this chick goes and she's staying at my sister's house. Your her family was in on it? My family was in on it. Welcome to Louder, the podcast that amplifies your voice. I'm Sean P., your host, and here we believe in giving everyone a platform to get louder. Whether it's your professional journey or personal stories, we encourage our guests to speak up on topics they couldn't voice before. Join us as we make waves, elevate conversations, and empower you to be heard. Let's get louder together. Hey guys, welcome to Louder, the pilot episode. I've got Luis on here today. He actually is the man who creates all the magic. He's behind the scenes. And so I couldn't think of a better person to have come on and really keep me on track. I want to share my story. I want to share my why, my truth with everybody here that will be listening. So that way you understand where I've come from, what I've been through, and really what validates maybe some of the advice that I'm sharing with you some of the situations that I'm sharing with you, and some of the stories that you're going to be hearing throughout this time, whether it's through me or from other guests that I bring on. How did you get to the point where you want to talk about your story? Because I feel like if you have a story that needs to be talked about, it's a good fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's a good question. I, You know, with that, I want to really kind of emphasize on the fact that, you know, there's been a lot of inner work that I've done for myself to get to this point. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not at all bitter. I'm not upset. You know, the work was hard, man. There were a lot of lonely nights, a lot of lonely days, a lot of really difficult moments looking in the mirror, trying to figure out, you know, what, what was going on, what the fuck I was doing, you know, why all this was happening, shifting my mindset into turning from a victim to just taking accountability for everything, whether even if it was my fault or not, you mm -hmm. know. And so really the story all starts when I was younger, if you if I really jump right into it, um, my parents were divorced when I was in fifth grade. My dad's an addict. My mom is a hardcore narcissist. I went back and forth between households. I, I mean, I, I was basically a pawn in a game. <laughs> you know, yeah. I went to four different high schools or five different high schools in four years. Yeah. You know, so I never really settled. And so when it all comes down to it, I really feel that God had prepared me from my adulthood with the upbringing that uh, I had with both of my parents. Mm -hmm. And he blessed me with having two amazing twin boys. Like not everybody gets to have twins on top of the fact that I have twin boys. Did, you know? Do twins run in your family? That's like a thing that I hear like yeah. within, you know. So twins don't run in my family at all. So it was like a true sign of some sort. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So identical <clears throat> twins are actually not even hereditary. It's just... Oh, I mean, I'm just a champion, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So fraternal is because the woman will pass two eggs. Okay. And so that's normally hereditary. So, oh. um, and then to have boys as identical twins is even more rare than wow. having girls. So hmm. I took that as, you know, I was, I was being given, I was being blessed, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I was being given an opportunity to put two seeds into the world and give back and change, um, you know, the direction of maybe where my life was going and how I was raised, you know? And so with that, um, I met my kid's mom. Uh, she was from out of town. She was actually from Vegas. I lived in California. And we really kind of hit it off at the moment. Um, at that time, you know, I had spent a lot of time on myself mm. and really addressing my issues that I had with my parents coming up and, you know, really getting into that. So I was actually in a really good spot at that time. Yeah. And I met this girl. She was from out of town. <laughs> Things happened quickly. <laughs> um, we ended up getting pregnant within like the first year that we were together. Okay. On top of that, then it was twins. Yeah. And so really just kind of thrown into the fire with everything. And so I didn't really have an opportunity to really get to know this person, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but again, in hindsight, everything happens for a reason, you know. So I wouldn't take anything back. Like, would I rather have a baby mama that's cool or that I'm still married with, married to? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so we had our boys and it wasn't really long after that that 
just things were really off, you know, with our relationship, things weren't clicking. Mm -hmm. I started to see a lot of patterns within this person that I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And honestly, dude, I never even heard the term narcissist or even knew what it was until this lady started calling me all the time. You're a narcissist. And I'm like, the first time she said that, I was like, what the, what the, what is that? Yeah. So of course, like I go and I look it up. Right. And all of the symptoms, I guess you would say. She was projecting. Yeah. Projecting all of them. Yeah. And I didn't have any of them. I was like, (laughs) what the hell? Yeah. And so the number one, uh, the number one projection that she was actually, it wasn't really a projection, but because I cared about my health and I would go work out mm. and I cared about my fitness, she took that as an opportunity as like, I, I, I'm, I was selfish and only cared about myself, right? That was like really the yeah. only thing that she had going for her. It got to a point where, so this, she had just moved to California and retired from being a bottle service for however many years. Yeah. So when you peel back that layer of those females in that career, I mean, realistically, they're living like a made up life, their entire like, yeah. career, like they're not even real, right? Yeah. They work at night. So the real world passes them throughout the day when they're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Everybody that they meet throughout the night or, you know, when, when they're working could be anything, bro. Like you and I could go to the club. Mm-hmm. I could have, oh, I could have my last $5,000. You could have your last $5,000. We could be unemployed <laughs> fucking losers, right? Yeah. And drop 10 G's on a table and tell these ladies that we're freaking doctors from New Hampshire, right? Then they wouldn't know. They the would difference. have no idea. Yeah. You know? And of course they're approached by athletes. Of course they're approached by important people or, or dudes who actually probably really yeah. are wealthy, right? And so they're treated a certain way. Yeah. And they are hot. At the time. Yeah. At the time. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, there's like an organic process. Like, you could only go so long within that career. Yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah. You know, at the end of her career, she, of course, had to go figure something else out. Well, Mm -hmm. come to find out, like, not a lot of talents outside of what she was doing, right? And so, after having kids, you know, I have no problem supporting or being the breadwinner, um for someone at home, you know, a wife mm-hmm. at home. I really believe in roles. I do. Yeah. Um, and I believe that they should be shared equally. I don't believe that either one of them is more important than the other, you know? And so the issue that we were having is like, there was just, there was, there was no substance there whatsoever. And she was miserable being home. Yeah. So it, she was just an unhappy person. Well, come to find out, she's that just is who she is, period, the end. She's the same exact person with no talent, doesn't have a job still, really, and is still, like, you, every relationship around her. Well, I shouldn't say every relationship because I really don't know. I don't really yeah. know a lot about her life. It doesn't seem like she has a really solid foundation of friends and love and care around her. Yeah. You know? And so um, I couldn't take it anymore. We tried going to therapy and I tried doing what I could, dude. And it was like halfway going through therapy where it just like really clicked for me where I'm like, this chick's just not going to get it. Like she, there, there's just actually like, it actually speaks about Mm -hmm. women like this in the Bible. Like you have to be careful with women like this. It talks about this in the Bible. Yeah. What it does. I've never heard anybody say that. We had a conversation one morning and within that conversation, I told her we were going to part ways. And at that time, I was trying to figure out how I could set her up for a little while until she'd get on her feet Mm -hmm. into where my boys would be taken care of. And this chick literally, like, looked at me straight in the face, dude, and was like, I'm going to take you for everything that you have. And sent chills down my spine, dude. Like, at that moment, I was like... This is it. Yeah, I'm like, it, it, my initial thought was like, <laughs> you don't even know who you're fucking with right now. Yeah. You picked the wrong dude. Yeah. And I immediately was just like, okay, cool. So. That's the spark that started everything. That's the spark. Yeah. Right. And so then events that have happened that I want to share with people that I think would resonate and help others, um, you know, <laughs> We'll get into all of those. But the first one really was, so I had that conversation. I went to work that day. I come home. 
she's gone. She took my kids and I had just made a commission for six grand. It's like a little over 6,000. I had that in cash in an envelope, put it up in a backpack upstairs. And I just like, you ever have that feeling like where you're just like, you know, something's off. Yeah. You know? And I knew that coming home. I'm like, what? Cause I was trying to call her before I got home. No answer. <laughs> and so, yeah, <laughs> I got home. Just the house <clears throat> is dead. Right. Doesn't smell like food. It doesn't like the, no kids. The, no kids. Yeah. You know, the air is not on the heat's not on. You could just tell that's just like stale. And so I walk around, I'm like calling your name, trying to like trying to convince myself that nothing was wrong. Mm-hmm. I ran upstairs to check that backpack. She knew that the money was in there. It was gone. It was at that point where I'm like, oh, my God, something's up. Her parents live in New York. So initially I was like, dude, this chick took the kids. She could she could be on her way to New York right now. I was freaked out, dude. Yeah. I started calling my family who lived about an hour from where we lived. I'm like calling my mom, calling my stepdad and calling my sisters, telling them what's going on. And they're all playing dumb, dude. Come to find out this chick goes and she's staying at my sister's house. Your Her family f- was in on it? My family was in on it. What? How the? F- okay. Like, dude. Sorry. I, that, that caught me off guard. I'm like, how does your own fam? Like, does your, I guess at this point you didn't know how crazy she was. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Fair. So, so, so she still had a little bit of like good grace on her side from your family. Yeah. For okay, sure. Cool. And so <clears throat> who knows what she took? So come to find out, right. That she told my family that I'm on drugs, that I'm on steroids, that I'm on this, that I'm on that, that I'm like violent, all this shit. Come, I've never been any of that. Like, have I done drugs? Like, well, of course, dude. Yeah. I mean, I've experimented. I've yeah. never been on drugs or an addict or into them yeah. ever. Right. And so I work out all of a sudden I'm in, st- I'm, I'm on steroids. Yeah. Like, come on, you know? <laughs> so the amount of bullshit that she was feeding my family was like, my family took her in and like, felt like they needed to protect her. Yeah. So it was about two days into it where I knew that she was there, but I didn't want to tell them that I knew because I felt like I was being set into a trap. Yeah. What, everybody wanted to have happen was for me to drive there knock on the door find out that she's there and create a scene yeah that's exactly what she was trying to bait me into because then her narrative would match because of course i'm emotional of yeah. course i'm pissed off of course i'm scared you haven't seen your kids dude i was yeah. i would have fucked anybody up yeah at that point you know but Again, when she told me, I'm going to take you for everything I had, you have, she didn't know who she was messing with. So at that point, I'm like, all right, I see you. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to play dumb. Mm-hmm. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to give you an opportunity whatsoever. So she almost kind of, I wouldn't say ruined her advantage. She she let you know she was what she was doing, and you're like, well, now I know. So now yeah. you need to be extra careful. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right out the gate. Yeah, And it's funny because narcissists, they will play hard like that mm-hmm. and they're not smart at all. Yeah. What what gets people hung up with narcissists is the reactions. Cuz that's their whole thesis is based off of reactions. Yeah. They'll play off of your reactions and they'll keep firing you up. So, it's actually really to def- it's really easy to defeat or to be better than a narcissist it really is Mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of self-control and it takes a lot of mental awareness of what is actually going on so that's something i think is very important for anybody dealing with someone like that that you need to remember that just check yourself right so five days later she comes home i call the cops of course because at that point as a man i'm like i cannot get verbally aggressive with this person Mm -hmm. i can't do anything that would spark any type of domestic dispute at all. So I called the cops. Yeah. Had the cops there, explained to them what was going on. And it was at that moment, I had actually already filed to get her in court. Mm-hmm. I'd already spoken to somebody. Already she filed. has no point, nowhere. She's not aware of this. Mm-mm. Yeah, okay. No. So um, I had an emergency hearing set up for custody. And so she got home, explained all that. She had a friend with her, of course. And even this, it was a dude... 
um, that was with her. And even he, you could tell that he was kind of like, almost like he knew that his friend was was in the wrong. He just had to have her back because it was her friend. Yeah. 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 So we go to court like the next day or the following. And, you know, at that time, like there's still a shit ton of emotion going on. And we're talking outside of court. We're, you know, and I'm, and and she's like, I think it was like really the first time for her that she was like, holy shit, like this is real. I'm at court. Yeah. This dude's not messing around. And so before you go to see a judge, you have to talk with a mediator. Yeah. So we're talking to this mediator. This guy actually did a really good job of just going through everything with us and was like, look, you don't need to see the judge. Why don't you guys just come to an agreement? You guys both want to see your kids be a part of their lives. You know, I can write the orders for you right here, right now, and you mm-hmm. could be done with it, right? So Sounds simple. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, cool. Like, it is that simple. You know, and if you're thinking about your kids, like, we have kids together. We should share that, period, the end, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's how simple I thought it would be. And so these orders were upon mutual agreement. Everything was upon mutual agreement. You'll share your kids upon mutual agreement, mutual agreement, mutual agreement, everything, dude. And so after this day, we went back home and I fell right back into that trap, dude. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we should try and work this out. I felt a little more comfortable because I'm like, now I have these orders to kind of fall back on Mm -hmm. if something does happen. But here I have two beautiful boys that deserve to have a loving family. Yeah. You know, I just didn't have it in my heart yet to be like, like now I can look back at my boys and be like, dude, I did everything I could, bro. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I did everything I could. I'm, sorry, it man. didn't work out. Yeah. You know, at that point I couldn't. Yeah. You know, so I gave it another shot. Mm. We went to therapy and again, going through therapy, I just like, it became pointless. It was like a repeat every time. And therapists are expensive. Dude. But when you told her, let's try to work this out, she probably, that's probably what she wanted. Mm hmm. Like, like yeah. she, that was the whole game. Like yeah. she was trying to play that game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so that didn't work. And I eventually moved out. I moved to my aunt's house and I had got a place, but it wasn't ready yet. It was still being worked on in the same community that we lived in mm-hmm. and move forward with everything, you know? And it was at that time that this chick got dirty, dude. Like you, like how much dirtier could you get from like basically hijacking someone's kids and not telling them where they are for five days? Yeah. (laughs) A lot dirtier. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, um, I lived with my aunt, we shared, you know, custody as we could. And it got to a point where, so I had got my new place. Finally, it was done and I move in and this chick just starts showing up everywhere, bro. Church. It didn't matter, dude, everywhere. And just taking my kids, dude, on my time. Like, we agreed that I would have them, so I'd have them at the time, and she would just show up. And But, like, physically just take them away? Mm-hmm. And you couldn't respond how you wanted to because you were you had to play the game. Totally, dude. So you had to be, okay, see you guys later. Yep. Like, you had to just be, you, you, had, to, you had to be just nice. Damn. Okay. So hard, bro. Yeah. So hard, dude. Like. So hard. So at that time, I had I already had a paralegal on payroll because I I didn't know the game at that point, mm-hmm. you know. So having an, an attorney really is not an advantage until you go to court. Like it, when you first get started on this journey, like you, you, you really I would advise to go find a paralegal or somebody that is familiar with the system that you can reach out to and they can give you advice on how to act, mm-hmm. what to do. So this dude, I would I would call him, be like, bro, he, she just took the kids. Like, of course, like I'm, you know, and it's I'm, your it, time. Yeah, 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 okay. You know, so it, everything's in text message communication, right, mm-hmm. with her. And so, you know, of course, I'm hyperventilating, I'm pissed. I'm like, dude, what do I do? He's like, bro, you just need to call the cops. Okay, stay where you are. Call the cops. Get an incident report. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would call the cops. I'd have to wait there for however long it took him because it was not an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. So they get to it when they get to it, mm-hmm. you know, which rightfully so, dude, you yeah. know, there's more important things happening. Yeah. Right. 
And so they come, and this will happen every single time. They come, what's going on? Well, I had my kids, she took them on my time. Well, you know, we're not really in the business of going and taking kids. So they never will go. People will say like, well, the cops will go to the house or I've had, you know, cops go to the house and grab the kids. Number one, I don't want that, dude. For your kids, yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't want the cops showing up at my kid's door and being like, hey, you need to come and scaring my kids and giving that vision or that like trauma to them and then me taking them and being like, it's okay, guys. And then having to explain to them why the police just took them from their mom's house and then transplanted them to their dad's house. Like there's no need for that. Yeah. That is part of the game that that person wants. Yeah. That's what she wants. She she's like baiting you and totally. you and you're just like looking at the bait. You're like, nope. <laughs> no, yeah. It's not, not gonna happen. happen. Yeah. No, it's not gonna happen. So um it took a long time, dude. So then we went to court. I took her back to court because I wanted more firm orders. Like I had to not get rid mutual of mutual agreement. Yeah, yeah. I had to get rid of this mutual agreement bullshit. Yeah. You know? And so within that time period, she wouldn't accept my phone calls. So I'd be trying they would be with her. I'd be trying to call them like just to say good night. You know, you have two kids, dude. Yeah. Like if something, God forbid, happened yeah. where you and your like their mom had to take some time apart. Like imagine going from giving a hug and kiss and smelling your kid every single day to not. Yeah. I mean, like one time my wife and the kids left for a week to go see family. And it was weird. Yeah. Like I can only imagine being alone after having a family yeah it, yeah it does not sound fun no it's yeah it's <laughs> yeah. not it's, it's an adjustment for yeah. sure so i would just want to call them and be like hey good night i love you guys or facetime you know like i'm so lucky that we have facetime you know i couldn't imagine like in the yeah. 90s and stuff like that before it even existed yeah like you just didn't see your kids yeah it, you know that was it that's yeah. it you know and that's like right at the height of like the court system and leaning into the mom's favor of everything. Mm. So we go back to court. I got orders. My orders were like 35 ish percent, you know, and it's like almost like that's the default because your kids are three. You're a guy, you're a dad. They need to be with mom. Well, dude, mom doesn't have a job. Yeah, mom is the one playing games. And this is probably like what the situation is. A majority of the time. And that's what's really what's really frustrating with the court system is that generally the female is the one who is the toxic person. Like we're not living in 1920 anymore. Yeah. Like men are capable of raising children. And if you go read books and look at information, like statistically, kids who are raised by men, like a good healthy men, are better off than they are. Being yeah. raised by a woman. Better citizens for society. I've read that a few places. You're, you're sorry, I'm going to cut you off a little bit. Dude, one of my buddies, Kyle uh, Villanoza, yeah, like I'll call him out, is he has a toxic lady. And it sounds very similar to you, but I think he doesn't know how to play the game. Yeah. And he hasn't seen his daughter in like years. And it's just, sorry, just that was, we can cut that off, but you're just triggering me to think of him. No, I'm, and you look like him, which is the funny part. You're like a big guy. Like, <laughs> no, dude, yeah. I'm glad that I, I don't want you to cut that out, dude. Yeah. I'm glad that you're bringing that up because these are the dudes and, and the people that I want to reach Yeah, because there is a way to fix this. There is a way to cut this off from happening, Yeah, you know? And unfortunately, sometimes when that happens, People take their lives over this shit, dude, yeah. you know, and quite honestly, like that happened recently within the last year and a half to a dude that reached out to me. Wow. And it was here and I was actually in Vegas. He was in California and I saw his, I saw it on social media. My heart just like dropped out of my stomach. And yeah. so like you asked earlier, like what, you know, what, what got me to this point? It's like. That was like the tipping point for me. I had to wait until my custody stuff was over to really start to talk about all this because everything will be used against you, right? Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't even be surprised if this was even brought back to court. But, I, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm sharing my story. Yeah. You know, I have a right to do that. And I'm not making anything up. And if it's contrary to what somebody else might think or believe, well, then cool. Well, then you tell your truth. Yeah. But this is mine. Yeah. You know, and this is what happened. So... Once I got new orders, going back to that, 
again, that's why Luis is here to keep <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. keep this on track. Yeah. But um, so things were actually going really well. They were they were fine. You know, I wanted more time with my boys. You know, so I would request it. No, yeah. always be told no. And so it got to a point where I had to take her back to court again because, dude, chick would just show up to my house, yeah. would do do things where it's like, now we have court orders. Now you're violating these, mm-hmm. you know, not only are you violating the court orders, but like you're violating my privilege of being a dad in my time with the kids. Yeah. You know, you're it's- stepping on that. You know? Oh yeah, you're like triggering me, and I've never even gone through this. <laughs> yeah. So, I t- we here we are back in court again, and this is where it starts to get really heavy. We're in mediation, and the mediator is asking us both questions, and at this point, the mediator can completely see through the bullshit. Like the stuff that this person's saying is like he's just looking at her like, I've seen a hundred of you, and. I see right through everything you're doing right now. Been there, done that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was actually like, well, why wouldn't dad get 50 50 custody? You know, yeah. why not? You guys live in the same town. Yeah. You know, he's, I don't, I don't work a nine to five. So my schedule was, gave me an opportunity to be present whenever I needed to be. Yeah. Why not? And so it was at that point where she was like, I'm actually going to move to, uh, I'm going to file for a move away. I'm going to move to Las Vegas. And I just looked at her and again, my heart dropped. And the dude across from me looks at me. He looks at her and he goes, well, I guess this conversation's over. And I'm, I'm like, it is yeah. what? And he's like, I can't, I mean, there's no, there's no point in me going any further if that's what she's going to do. So we left, dude. Yeah, she filed. And, she filed for a move away. And you think this whole time she she's well, she is gonna move away? Yeah. And damn. Okay. So this whole time, like I'm now, like I don't I don't even really know what to think because this person is not healthy. She's not thinking within the best. She's not thinking within the best direction of our kids. Mm-hmm. Like, why on earth would anybody move their kids? away from the other parent that's healthy, that's wanting to contribute, that wants to be active, that is consistently showing you that they want to be present. And this person, like, dude, I literally never text her, never, like, fought with her, went out of my way. Yeah, of course, I stuck up for myself a few times. Of course, I had to. But I was never that dude who would, like, call her and be like, who are you with? What are you doing? Like, no, dude. I want you to find someone else, dude. Leave me alone. Yeah. Like we're done, man. I was, I was done. Yeah. You know, I had zero interest. Like I don't even see this person. Like even, even, even now, like when she's around me, like it's almost like I just see through her. Like I don't even see her as like a real person, bro. (laughs) Honestly, dude, I just like look right through her. Yeah. It's like, that's it. You were a vessel at this point, you know? So there's a process, dude, to to move away. Yeah, you you can't just get up and move, right? Like, mm-hmm. is that considered like kidnapping at that point? Pretty, it would be. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the way that the system really works, like, what the reason why I was so freaked out, and if she would have played it right the first part, she would have taken my kids to New York right away. Because really, at that point, we didn't have any orders that said that she couldn't. So if she would have done that right away, she would have been in New York still. Because you, yeah. you, there's nothing that can make you bring them. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do? Go and kidnap them? Yeah. Because at that point, she, now she's established something. Yeah. So if I fly to New York and then grab the kids, now she could be like, hey, I moved here with my family. And this guy came, just took my kids. Yeah. Right? So it would have it would have become yeah. even more difficult. So luckily, she wasn't that smart. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So um, the process of moving away to another state is is really gruesome, dude. It's exposure to the max. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's disgusting. So she played the game. And this is actually the only time where she kind of got me. Yeah. And because at that point, I was already like, 
dude, I'm a normal dude. I've got no past convictions of anything. I don't have yeah. drug history or any bad history. And I'm like trying to be an active dad. I'm, you know, trying to be present, right? Why would anybody t- let someone move their kids away? This is ridiculous. Yeah. Like I didn't meet her in Las Vegas and then she decided to move to California. She moved to California where we met and then had our kids. Yeah. You know? So she she played it right, man. I had I had my guard down and was like, there's no way, you know? And for me, really, like that it actually it opened my eyes to the system. Yeah. And it actually really gave me a lot of empathy for other races, other cultures, other people who are automatically thrown into the system. Cause me being a white dude raised in, you know, mm-hmm. middle to upper class areas, I never really had to to experience this level of bullshit. Yeah. You know? And so it, it expanded my heart for a lot of different people and situations, you know, being thrown into something like this, man. I, I mean, it sparked a question in me was, so would you have not, you're only in Vegas then because of your kids. Yeah. Yeah. She played the game right. So yeah. you have to, we had to go back to court. Yeah. Right. When you go back to court, you have to file. It's a trial. Mm-hmm. You're going through a trial. So she hired the right attorney, some lady boy that came in a suit and chick was smart dude she came prepared man i think i can call her a chick i don't know yeah the person was smart so (laughs) she she knew what to say she knew how to get this accomplished she knew what the judge would want to see yeah she knew everything so mom wasn't working on welfare mom taking like homeschool ridiculous college courses to show that she was like going to school and bettering herself. Mom got um, offer agreements from five different, five or six different places here in Vegas. Jobs. Jobs. Yeah. All of which friends own the companies, right? Yeah. Or had connections. Mom showed rent for what a house would be and had a, and had a house rented already, ready to go. Yeah. Mom showed the school that they'd be going to and the ranking of it. And, you know, and the argument was, hey, mom can have a better style of life for these kids. And at that time, I fell on bad advice because my attorney was like, dude, don't even pay the child support because she's on welfare. The state's paying it. Right. And so I'm like, "Okay, you know, it wasn't even much anyhow. Right. And so. That was that was looked bad upon me. Yeah. You know, and so the judge was kind of like, dude's not paying child support, you know, although like I had my kids 35 percent of the time. Right. And he's looking at this scenario like, well, it looks like it would be, you know, Vegas is a lot cheaper (laughs) and starts, you know, and it's only, you know, you know, so far away, you know, and I could hear it happening right in front of my eyes, dude. And I'm just like almost numb at this point at this trial. You're like, you felt it coming. You're like, I felt it coming. My attorney was falling over paperwork, wasn't defending me in certain areas where I'm like, well, that's not true. Yeah. You know, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. And so then finally the the judge was like, all right, well, let me back up. Mm -hmm. So within that process, within that process, we had to do what's called a 3111 evaluation. So a 31 of a 3111 evaluation, you go to a third party mediator because the court systems, they don't want to be held responsible for any of this. Yeah. Right. They just want to be the ones who make the rulings. So they pass off the bulk of this to a third party. Right. Mm-hmm. So this third party could have their hands, you know, or you know, could be lined up with attorneys. It's kind of like if you're in a business, let's say even like real estate back in the day when you had appraisers or any business where you're in, where you create real estate, you have your own title rep, Mm -hmm. you know, you have your own relationships with these third parties that you need within your business. You create this relationship. And so they picked the evaluator that we went to. You don't have a say in, in the evaluator. So this is where my attorney fucked up. Oh, 
So if it would have, if I would have known then what I know now, yeah, it would have been okay. You guys pick five. I'll pick. You guys pick five. Out of those five, I'll pick two. And out of those two, she could pick one, but I would have to agree or something like that, mm. right? So basically, I'm picking. But it gives them an opportunity to pick a handful. Yeah. So my attorney was just kind of like, oh, cool, we'll go with that person, you know? Come to find out, dude, this lady that we went to was like a joke, dude. Like complete women's rights. Oh. Like, dude, it was. <laughs> so going to empower her. You oh, know? bro. Yeah. And so, you know, of course, like my kid's mom is telling this story about all this stuff that's not true. Like there was this one time when she was pregnant, right? that she got crazy on me, dude. And I was laying down sleeping. I was trying to sleep for that, yeah. for that matter. She got on top of me and she's like yelling at me as I'm like laying down. And I told her, I'm like, look, dude, if you don't get off me, like I'm just going to get up. Like, obviously, you know, what's going to happen if I just get up, like I'm going to have to like move you over, yeah, get you off of me. So I did that because she wouldn't get off me. I didn't throw her. Like I didn't, you know, it wasn't like uh, aggressive. Like, yeah, dude, look at me. Yeah. Like if somebody smaller than me is on me, like I'm going to get up. Yeah. You it, know, it's not it's not like you're physically trying to assault. No, yeah. yeah. I was just trying to get up. And so she used that as like I physically assaulted her. And actually the woman, the evaluator caught her in that lie because then it, it first turned out she was telling the lady that I physically assaulted her and like abused her. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Here's the story of what happened. I told the story. Cause we had to originally go together when yeah. we interviewed with this lady. So the lady was like, it, well, is that true? And mom was like, yeah. Oh, so he was never physical, physically abusive towards you. Well, uh, he, you know, and it just like round in circles, right? God, dude. So that evaluation didn't work out to my favor. And so that evaluator, she like, touched on like issues that I had with my parents stuff that was like completely irrelevant to me being a dad or, or having kids. Yeah. And so then the evaluation is turned over to the court and that evaluation leaned in her favor. So not only, you know, was the judge just dude, the judge that we had at the time is now retired older dude. He actually was a really nice guy. Like I feel I think these judges have a really tough job, dude. They yeah. really do. Because the court system, I don't think even gives them the proper tools to make like the best decision. Like, hmm. quite honestly, bro, for all the money that's spent with all the bullshit that goes on in between court, like, why don't you assign somebody like to go evaluate these people with their kids for like a week? Not saying like spend, private investigators. Yeah. Like yeah. not saying spend the night with them, but just pop in. Yeah. See what the, see what it's all about. You could see who's fake, who's not, who's real, you know, who's bullshitting. You could you could see through all that, right? Or why don't you just allow parents to be parents and be like, hey, you both had kids. You have them half the time. You have them half the time. Period. The end. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Like then it's clear who can't be a parent at that time. Yeah. Not the opposite way around. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So she moves away to Vegas. At that point. These these orders were like completely written for her. I I was able to see them. It was like one weekend out of every month, and then I had an optional weekend. Optional of, where you both have to agree. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I just had to exercise that option. Like, of course, I took every single one. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, but at the time, I didn't have a place in Vegas. Mm. At the time, COVID happened. So I stayed in almost every hotel along the strip. It was so difficult, bro. It was so stressful, dude. My yeah. boys, they didn't have a carpet to play cars on. Yeah. You know? And where could like, you hang out with little kids on the strip? Dude, it was so exhausting, bro. Yeah. So exhausting. And, you know, to make it even worse, like I had to return them at six o'clock on Sundays to their mom. Mm -hmm. Well, checkout time in hotels is at 11. So from 11 to 6, I had to find stuff. I, I, I had to find things to do with them. I couldn't bring them back to her early because then that would feed into her narrative. 
oh, he brings them back every time early, so he really doesn't want to be with his kids, blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know? So uh, I had to be very smart with what I was doing. So you're just, like, walking around the strip with these kids, not doing nothing, just trying to kill time, but also enjoy it. Yeah. But it's, like, hard because you're on the fucking strip. Well, and they're tired, dude. Yeah. They're not, they're not enjoying themselves, dude. They're yeah. four or five years old, dude. You know, it's like, it, there's only so much you could really do. You know, At that point, like, sleep. they might even want to go back home to yeah. their mom because they're, like, yo. Uncomfortable, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> I made the best of it. And then I got my apartment. Yeah. And, you know, within this time period, man, she would not let me see him at all, like, extra. I would I would hit her up. Like, hey, can I come down and, you know, just spend an hour with them? Like, literally when COVID was happening, bro, the boys would be like, yeah, we're going to go to Target later. Like, so she would do all of this in front of my face when I would be talking to them, she would almost be like taunting me the entire time yeah. in the back, you know, like, you know, making faces, recording my video, recording my calls with them, like would, would, would make a point to show like, you know, phone calls or, or presents or cards or things that they had got from other people that she's allowing them to talk to all the time, like her friends and this and that. Right? Yeah. And so it got to a point where I would like ask her like, Hey, if you're going to target, just let me know when, like, if you're going to target at a certain time, I will drive from California just to be with them for 10 minutes while you walk around target. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Whatever it is. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not going to work for us. Up until this day, dude, she still says shit like that. Like my wife cuts hair. Yeah. The boys love getting their hair cut by my wife. Yeah. And like there will be time where we're like, hey, do you want me to grab the boys real quick, get their haircuts? No, we're good. Like, no, no, you're not getting your haircut. The boys, we're there's no we're yeah. Like we're okay, but they're also to the point now where they're what nine ten nine. Yeah, they can make their own decisions as hair, right? Like or sh yeah, like the fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Dude. So, but yeah, she a narcissist will keep kids young for as long as they can. They want to control. That's the only way that they can. The older they get, the more aware that they become, mm -hmm. the more that they slip from their control. Because these people are crazy. Like, nobody likes them. Mm -hmm. And so it only takes so long for a kid to be like, <laughs> wow, you know? And that's actually really, like, the beautiful thing about all of this and what's actually not the beautiful thing, but something that has put my heart to rest a lot of times and I think should should help other people as well is... In today's world, the way that you can log information, it wasn't like it used to be. You know, for example, like we had to communicate within a court ordered app, right? So within that app, like when my boys are old enough and they want to see everything, if they do, they're going to see everything, bro. And at that point, they will understand that everything you did everything you could to be there, but if if they have any if they had any resentment towards you for not being there when you were young you have a why she, <laughs> totally yeah totally she has a slim chance of having a positive relationship with these boys as they get older does she see that do you think she thinks that yeah she knows, she knows at this it. point yeah cuz it's like every single relationship that she even has around her including her family and how old do the kids have to be before they can choose to be with you full time you know what i didn't even know the answer to that yeah until recently when I got split custody, my boys started telling me that I think it's 15 mm. where they get to choose. So she's already planting seeds in their head. You know, that's what these people do. They just poke. Do you think there's, I don't know if this is a question you want to answer. There's any chance that they choose to just be with her full time at that age? No. Zero chance. No, I don't yeah. No way. Yeah. In terms of like a better quality of life, like this chick has been on welfare since... Mm -hmm. She had kids. Yeah. Now, I think maybe still. Yeah. Um, the mind games that she plays with them, they're, you can already tell they're starting to get triggered. They understand. They're starting to understand. And Damn. I was raised with someone like her. <laughs> so I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm so loving with my boys, my career path, my wife, everything. Like, I provide a more stable consistent better way of life for them like there's no pressure at my house 
I don't manipulate or talk to them about their mom or talk down or whatever. Now that they're a little bit older, I will tell you like when things happen, I'll be like, bro, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like for example, recently after one of the boys, after one of the boys practices, she tried to take, she took one of the boys after the practice. Yeah. And so I called the cops and this is recent. Mm -hmm. This is still happening. Yeah. Okay. So I called the cops. Fuck. <laughs> Dude. So I think it finally hit her because she actually reached out and was like, hey, can we talk about this? And it was like the first time ever where she was like, can we talk about this? Right. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, dude, I've been waiting like to have these conversations like stop. Yeah. I'm done. Like nobody's playing games but you like I'm good. I've already asked you a hundred times like, hey, can we stop all this? Like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to have any animosity. Like, can we just raise our kids like Dude, I had a three-year relationship with you, girl. I don't owe you shit. Mm -hmm. You're nothing but my kid's mom. That's it. Period. The end. Yeah. Like, let's move on. You don't know me no more than I know you. Yeah. So why can't I but just be we're a parents? Cool, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but we have kids together. So why can't I just be a cool dude? Why can't you just be a cool chick? And like, let's just worry about raising two cool people. Yeah. That's it. Period. The end. We don't have to hate like, each we don't other. even have to hate each other. For yeah. what reason? I never even done uh, the other than leaving her. I've never done anything to her yeah. ever. If anybody should not like someone, I should not like her. Mm. But I'm not, I'm I don't I don't carry stuff like that in my heart and in yeah. my chest. Do I care for her? No, dude. Would yeah. I trust her as far as just raising my? I don't I don't even trust her to raise like my kids by herself. Yeah. So the answer to all of that is no. I don't. But. Am I a better person to know that like my kids deserve to have a loving mom and a loving dad? And can I put everything aside mm -hmm. to accomplish that? hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. So as I started establishing more time and more presence in Vegas, like I got my apartment, I started moving my career, you know, and all of this, there's so much behind the scenes work with my wife, with her girls, yeah. with everything, bro. I had to get licensed out here in Nevada a shit ton, dude. Yeah. So much work, bro. Um, and I couldn't just jump off and do things too fast because it would, it would be irrelevant if I did them too fast. You know, like if I would have just moved to Vegas, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have just been miserable in Vegas, in Vegas, <laughs> dealing with the same issues. Yeah. You know where, so I chose cause I found a, an, an amazing, beautiful woman. I chose, luckily she, chose it too to get through the ringer with all this yeah. and build something there at the same time I'm paralleling this, yeah. you know, and which was super hard, dude, super hard. So my career is growing out here. I'm able to spend more time out here. A mixed blessing happens of a, a business opportunity that I had with a friend of mine mm. didn't work out. So kind of like propelled me into being into Vegas and so as I'm out here more, I'm letting her know, like, hey, can I can I spend time with the boys? No. Come to find out. The boys are in. She's taking the boys early to school to go to this uh, program called Safe Key, which is a before school program. Yeah. Because she had to go to her like whatever she did but that's, early. But that's like an hour and a half every day that you could have just you picked them up or whatever. And, hung and out. afterwards. Yeah. Oh, after school program too. And afterwards. Oh Get this, God. bro. Yeah. Ironically, it didn't happen on purpose because I actually went to these apartments first before they ever even moved. Mm. Where my apartment was, was literally a three minute walk to their house. Hmm. Where their school is, is across the street from their house. So where I live and where they live and then their school's right here. So you're, yeah. Like, why so, are they going to this program when you're right there? And I would tell her, like, hey, I could pick them up after school. Just come pick them up. No, it turned into a big ordeal because I went down to the safe key place. And I'm like, look, dude, I didn't agree for them to be in this program. Look at my court orders. It says that I have to be a part of this decision. I didn't agree to this. Mm -hmm. So that's what narcissists do is they'll start to just because it fits into their narrative. Because the narrative is like, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a runaway woman with two kids you know, just trying to, you know, really make it by life. And, 
you know, this guy's just, you know, he doesn't pay any child support. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't, you know, he's never around and he's always really mean to me. None of it's ever true. So they have to keep their story going, dude. And eventually it runs out. And I'll tell you how it ran, ran out when we conclude all this. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. So I would go to these places. She would enroll them in the YMCA to go there when she couldn't have them. I went to the YMCA. I'm like, hey, why are they here? How did you know where they were? She was enrolling them. Kids talk, dude. Kids. And especially yeah. when you don't ask them questions, mm -hmm. they talk. And yeah. that's another key example that I, I, I need people to understand is the more that you grill your kids, the less they'll the talk. Less they'll talk. Because my thought was, sorry to cut you off, was I was like, yeah. I, I hope he wasn't taking the bait of you stalkering, stalkering to find where the kids are at and all that. I was like, oh, nope. Yeah, but you were playing it smart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, so you can't. Kids yeah, talk. You, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Dude. And you can't like you can't follow your ex or your kids and take pictures of what's going on and then present it in court. Like it looks stalkerish. Dude, yeah. it, that looks bad. You cannot do that. You know, yeah. and so, yeah, the less you ask questions to your kids and you just love them, the more you're going to get. So my kids would tell me all the time what they were doing all the time. So then I'd, I wouldn't even go, oh, well, thanks for telling me, guys. I would just be like, oh, that's cool. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Right on. Well, I, do you guys go pretty often? That sounds like really, that sounds like a fun time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we go, you know, boom. And Seven I'd, days okay. a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, okay, there, yeah. So there would be so many things like that. Damn. She would enroll them in sports without telling me till after the initial introduct you know you enroll your kids into sports right and then you have that initial like parent meetup yeah right where you meet the coach you meet the team you know this is the family this family this family she wouldn't tell me about that until after then she would let the first practice go by yeah then she would let the, sometimes the first game go by until she'd be like hey they're enrolled in this so then already everybody that's on there has this image of me that i'm just some absent father that you, you didn't go until their x game yeah what the fuck? little did they know dude yeah so as i become more present and i'm asking for more time and i'm cutting her off at every angle i'm going to safe key i'm disrupting that so now safe key's like hey your kids can't come here your your ex is causing problems they're they're saying this to her is, is causing problems i'm not causing problems i'm just sticking up for myself yeah but do you think that could have ever bit you in the ass like mm -mm. oh he's being you made you made sure you did it like you didn't go to safe what is it safe key yeah you didn't go there and start yelling you just said no. hey guys like this is what's going on and you were just like i recorded everything yeah bro. so you were just a calm guy just telling them what it was hey i'm just a dad yeah trying to be a part of my kid's life yeah and were there some exchanges where, like, I got frustrated? For sure, bro. Yeah. Like, there were certain points, and it's all recorded. I have everything recorded, bro. Yeah. So that's another bit of advice that I'm going to tell to someone. Do not record someone. Yeah. But you have a right to have a recorder on yourself mm -hmm. recording yourself. Yeah. You have a right to do that. And that's what I did. Yeah. And so I would go to these places, and sometimes they would be like, well, we're not giving you any information. And, yeah, I would get pissed. Like, yeah, you are, because these are my kids, and if you don't, then I'm going to bring you into court. You're violating a court order. Yeah. So, yeah, you will. And Safe Key would not. They told me that I had to have my attorney send a notice to, like, just a loophole. Yeah. Right? But it got to a point where my ex, their kid, my kid's mom, she was put on notice. So I would bait her into these conversation apps that we had to talk through court. Mm -hmm. I would bait her right directly into admitting what she was doing. Yeah. And then it would, it, it would almost get to a point where she would be like, wow, this looks real bad. And so she would stop. Mm -hmm. I would continuously, narcissists are not smart. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you can keep your emotions in check, you can lead them wherever you want them to yeah. go. You like, because you're doing that. You're telling the truth. Yeah. You can't, you can't bullshit the truth. If you're being truthful and your intentions are all about your kids and you're being a good person, you don't need to worry about anything else. And these people, mm -hmm. it's not. It's about you and playing this game. So you can lead them wherever you want. So I would literally, I have so much in writing. Like now, if we were to go to court, like I literally have an entire story that I've logged <laughs> And just I feel like you have together. a binder with sticky notes. Bro, and like just I have like, a box. 
<laughs> oh my god! Like, on top of that, I have files, you know, on my computer saved, organized, yeah. everything, dude. You have to audio be. files, video files, like so. Again, if or when my kids ever question or want to see any of that, it's not important to me if they don't want to. Yeah, I'm not going to press it on them. I'm certainly not going to allow them to dig into it when you know before they're of age and like at a place where they can understand where they could understand because yeah. when they do dig into that when they see it's not going to be good it might oh, that's like do you want them to dig into that though because no. I, it's like a like I, I i get that you don't like their mom but it's their fucking mom so it's yeah, it's, no, it's, it's going to be a weird yeah, situation no. yeah i don't but, want to but you can't hide it from them if they look for it the and that's is, the part where i feel like if they ever go looking for it you need to be the one that shows them because if they if you don't then that makes that pushes them away from you that's you're you're exactly right <laughs> i'm not going to be the one who points them in that direction their mom is yeah because they're eventually going to get tired of the games mm -hmm. and they're gonna be like what's really going on yeah dad what's really going on and you know, at a certain point, I'm going to have be like, dude, do you really want to see the truth of what's really going on or not? I yeah. don't really want to share this with you. I don't want you to see any of this because you deserve to have a great relationship with your mom and with your dad. But it's not going to be me that even gets them close to being curious about that stuff. It's going to be her. Yeah. A hundred percent. And obviously this podcast, if they ever listened to it, but well, that's eventually, also, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm going to be old. Yeah. yeah I'm going to block them from being able to review any of this. Yeah. What will probably happen is their mom will probably sit them down and make them watch stuff like this. But yeah. that's, again, it's not, I can't, Yeah. that's that's on her, Yeah. you know? So I'm not doing this because of that. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing my experience because there are people who take their lives. Yeah. There are people who are going through this and don't have a voice, don't know what to do. If I would have only had just certain answers to get me through this, bro, you know how many days... I would lay in my bed. You know how many times I would contemplate whether or not I wanted to even live? Yeah. You know how many relationships I probably destroyed because I was just so completely disconnected from reality? You know how many opportunities in business I probably blew because I just didn't have the mental capacity to take care of anything? You know how many times, like, dude, I cried? Yeah. You know how many times I questioned who the fuck I was? Dude, it's the worst, bro. It's the fucking worst, dude. Yeah. It's the worst. My goal, I even have text messages to their mom from when the moment they were able to move away. I told her, my intention is to have shared custody of the boys. It will happen one day. That was always my intention. How Not long, because... Go ahead. How long did it take from that text to for that to become a reality? Four years. Four years. So it wasn't overnight. Four or five years. No. Yeah. No. And it can't be overnight, man. Like, it's... No, it's not overnight. Yeah. And what, you know, we've we've had a podcast about this, about surrendering to time. And, like, that's really where I had to get comfortable because when you're in a system, like, you can't speed that stuff up, dude. But then when you're waiting for certain things, you can't just die. You can't just stop. Yeah. You know? And so I took all every single opportunity I could, even if it was micro improvements in anything I could, like, I saw my dad, who is still an addict, he chose drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. I got into working out. Yeah. And I chose that. Dude, I don't judge anybody based on the way that they look. Like, if, you know, yeah. like, super unhealthy people, yeah, I have an issue with that. Because yeah. you obviously just don't give a shit. Yeah. But it's not a matter of me looking a certain way. Like, that was my outlet, dude. That's when I could be by myself and, like, release yeah build you know challenge myself you know i thought i was going through a hard time okay well you know on the 10th rep like you know i'm doing this for my kids and it would like release all this stuff that i could you yeah. know so that's what i chose you know and so it takes a long time man it takes a long fucking time dude and it's painful and a lot of people will turn against you because they hear the bullshit. Yeah. I don't talk to anybody in my family. I don't talk to my mom. I don't talk to my stepdad. I don't talk to my real dad. Yeah. I don't talk to my sisters. We talked about that. We said we were talking about how every the society wants you to like be close to family, even no matter who, what they are. But like, if a relationship doesn't serve you, regardless if it's your mom, your dad, like 
it's okay to cut them off. And it's fucking not scary. I don't know what the word is. Sad, but like it might be your mom. But if it, that relationship does not serve you, like it's okay to cut it off as an adult. Yeah, it's just what it is. It really is, dude. Yeah, it really is. It took me a long time to get to that place where I, I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I don't sit and think about them and like, oh my god, like I can't believe this is happening. Like I'm really okay, dude. Yeah, I'm really okay. And but that took a lot of work, dude. You know, my sisters. I think about my sisters, man, because they are really kind of just. A victim of all of this like being thrown in in the middle of it yeah you know um i still wish the best for all of them i still love them as my family but ultimately dude like there's just no place for them in my life and everything that they believe about me is not even me yeah you know it's what they've been told it's you know they're completely brainwashed or manipulated into who i am yeah. You know, and it's unfortunate. It's like a false reality that they it, live in. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It sucks, man. But but whatever, you know, my family now is solid. My friends now solid. My life now solid. Yeah. You know. But do you think that'd be harder if you didn't have your new family? If you did, if you were alone, it would be hard it would be harder to be okay with those relationships being gone. I don't think so. No. No, I don't think so. Okay. Because it's not that I replaced them with that with with this. Yeah. I legitimately saw that these relationships were not in the best favor of the direction I was going okay. and that they needed to be cut and they needed to be cut a hundred percent. I've even reached back to my mom and going through therapy, you'll learn about a triangle. So a triangle is when there's three people. Mm -hmm. And so when you insert a third person, you have a triangle, right? There's no direct communication between one person to another. Yeah. You add that other person. Right. So my mom would chip away and like try and talk with me and, and she would always make it about my kids. Right. Yeah. I finally told her, like, look, my relationship with you has nothing to do with your relationship with my kids. Mm -hmm. This isn't a triangle like I will not be included in the relationship that you have with my kids. Here's their their iPad information. If you want to call them, call them. I'm cool with that. Yeah. But you're not going to call me to have them call and then this and then ask me like, well, you know, the no, dude, I'm not playing your game. Go direct. Yeah. That's I'll encourage it. Kid. <laughs> yeah. I'll encourage it. Yeah. You know, I'll tell them to call you. I'll, you know, I don't, you know, they know they've heard me talk about my, my mom and they know I don't have a good relationship, but it's also because their mom chimes in on that and like tries to like plant seeds of like, why your dad doesn't talk to his mom and stuff like that. So there's a combination of everything, yeah. you know, but I take accountability for some things that, you know, that I've said to them or told them. Right. But anyhow, I've kicked out that triangle. People don't like that, dude. Yeah. They don't like that because in reality, what they want is they want a piece of you and they want what they want. There's all, there's like, they don't, they lack kind of accountability. And that's like most people though. Almost everyone. It's, dude. it's hard to just be direct. Yeah. Know? Almost everyone. So prior to me getting f like split custody, bro, it got dirty, dude. Yeah. It got so much dirtier. Like this chick started grabbing at straws because I started cutting her off with going to safe key, going to the YMCA, going to the sports organizations, going everywhere, going to the doctor, going to their school. Mm -hmm. Like I would go to their school, bro, before school just to see them. And then their school would be like, hey, you can't come here before school. Like, bullshit. Yeah. I'm here. What are you going to do? We'll, we'll, we'll have to call the authorities. All right. Well, I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, call so them. So go ahead and call them. Have them here. And I'll be here after as well. Because I, I have a right to see my kids. And I'm going to take every single opportunity that I have yeah. to see my kids because they're being hidden from me. Yeah. My kids were legally kidnapped going through the court system. And here I am trying to get them back. And you have all these systems that are trying to protect it because of this false reality that this person has painted for a couple years now. Yeah. So the, the, the biggest thing that was almost one of the scariest for me was in the state of Nevada, they do not take domestic violence lightly. You do not, in the state of Nevada, need to have like, markings or anything like that to prov to show like abuse so there was one morning where the crosswalk where the crosswalk 
worker from the school is at the corner. I'm standing at the crosswalk, which just so happens to be the street that leads to where their house is, mm-hmm. right? I'm standing there waiting for them one morning. And I see this chick take her phone out. Mind you, they do things intentionally, right? I'm just standing there, bro. Literally, this was provided as evidence. You see a big smile on my face and you see the back of one of my boys running up to me to jump and give me a hug. This chick pulls her phone out, takes a picture. But she thought that would make you look bad? She files it. She goes to the to the police station, files for a temporary restraining order against me. While this is happening, so she files and gets granted a restraining order. Like an emergency restraining order. Because this chick is so fearful of me. But really what she's what she's fearful of is the truth is about to be exposed. Dad's here. I've been lying to everybody this whole time, including my current boyfriend. Yeah. So that's what she's scared of. So it just so happens at that time, I had my kids. I didn't know about this restraining order. So we would meet in the Smith's parking lot. Because it was well lit and she felt safe there. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting my kid back in her car. I have no idea about this restraining order. This chick freaking takes off, fucking runs over my toe. So me, I'm dude, I'm playing the game too. I call the cops. So the cops get there and it's taking forever, dude. They're like, talking to me, treating me like a criminal, dude. I'm like, I've got white Nikes on, bro. I went to the emergency room and literally the chick fucking fractured my toe yeah. with her car. So I'm telling this cops this, dude. I'm like, look, at here's my, like, here's the sheet from the doctor. They're like, well, she didn't purposely do it. You said you were putting your kid in, like walking it backwards. I'm like, no, chick legitimately took off on purpose like that, knowing, like, did she like, run over my toe? No, but she knew that like, I'm putting the kid in the car, dude. She sped off on purpose. Yeah. So they're treating There's me like... There's no other fucking way... Th- how else? That, that's stupid. <laughs> like, so yeah. they're looking at this restraining order. So when you get a restraining order issued against you, you need to be given it uh. and acknowledge it before it could actually really be real. Yeah. It was already ordered by the judge, mm-hmm. but I hadn't... I didn't know about it. So these guys are like, there's a restraining order out this guy, but he hasn't. Like, they're not even knowing what to do. They're just, like, treating me like a criminal. So they're like, look, if you want to press charges, you need to go down to the police to the police station, and you need to, you could show all this evidence, and you could take it up with them. Yeah. Like, fine. All okay. right. Later. I go to the police station. I'm filing. And the lady comes back, and she's like, hey, the, the police are outside. They need to talk with you. I'm like, about this incident? No, it's about something else. Like, okay. I go outside. There's two police officers, like, you know, almost like, like, well, they're doing their job, dude. They don't know who I am. Yeah. You know, they don't know if I'm really am someone dangerous. Yeah. So they're like, are you Sean Pachowski? Yeah. Well, did you know that your ex filed a restraining order against you? I'm like, what? Yeah. She says you're stalking their house. She's fearful, this and that. Well, come to find out, bro, when you talk to male police officers, they don't like chicks like this. They see this. They know this game. And so every single, almost every single one, dude, out of all the incident reports that I've had to file, every single dude cop, even lady cops are like, look, man, you need to protect yourself. They're basically like, this is what you do. You needed to do, right? So they're like, hey, we need you to sign this restraining order. Like, okay. So then now I have this official restraining order against me. Like, even if I'm, I'm walking to their school and she's around, boom, I get picked up, I go to jail. Now I legitimately, now I have a violation of a restraining order yeah. against me, which now is a problem, right? So when you have a restraining order filed against you, you have an opportunity to rebuttal it. Well, like I told you, I record everything. So I also had video recording of the entire incident. Yeah. The judge was pissed, dude. Basically told her, like, what are you doing? Drop and dropped it, right? That was like her last Hail Mary attempt into getting me in trouble before 
all this. Like, we were already going to court. Yeah. So. The judge just looked right through everything. Dude, it was over the phone, too. Like, yeah, he was just, like. And then, of course, it was almost like he felt like he had to lecture me as well. Because then he started going off on me about certain things. And I was just kind of like, all right, Your Honor. Yeah. Cool. You know. So then we end up going to court. I get split custody. And since, you know, it's been cool, but, you know, it's <laughs> here we are Do now. Do you feel like this is just a new beginning? This is a new beginning. Yeah. There was so many things within my life, with my wife, with my kids, with everything that was a leading moment up to up to this. Yeah. I live in I live in Las Vegas because my kids are here. In hindsight, I'm so much happier here in Vegas than in California. Yeah. California is a shithole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? We're both California transplants. Yeah. But. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to, um, I'm glad that I played the game the way that I did. My kids and I are so close. I have such a great bond with them. They've been protected so well from my side of a lot of the things that have happened. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy, dude. Yeah. So with that being said, obviously that's kind of, this is like kind of like the, that's the close of that chapter and the new chapter is, you know, split custody. Cause how long have you had split custody now? Since February. Yeah. So it's literally barely about to hit a year. So this new chapter of your life. And do you think that this louder podcast or your new brand is going to be talking more about that previous chapter? Or do you also plan to kind of throw in new things you're going through and things like that? I want to talk more about new things that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. I want to help people understand that and that I can relate to this type of scenario because there are a lot of people going through this community and through mm -hmm. the court system. So that's why I wanted to really share. And, in you know, throughout some of the podcasts that I do, I'm sure, you know, more and more little bits are going to come to fruition where that I'll share the th mm -hmm. things that have happened, you know. Um, but I'm excited to share you know, with this new chapter where my life's going and, you know, the tenacity and the patience and all the things that I, that I had to learn from going through all this to get me here and to show someone like it gets better. Yeah. You know, it does. <laughs> and I think within it life, just bro, keeps women, right? <laughs> yeah, for real, yeah. for real, dude. Yeah. I was just going to say in life, it doesn't matter whether you're going through a custody battle. It doesn't matter. Like within life, you a lot of times have to go through really difficult times to get over the hump. Mm -hmm. And so many people quit, dude. So many people quit, man. They shut down. Do you think, um, I've, I've, I don't know who said this, but it's like, Everybody wants to be strong. Everybody wants to be all these things. But in order to become strong, you have to go through difficult things. Yeah. And that's where it's like you can't have one without the other. And people like will choose will say, hey, I want to be a strong person. But they refuse to go through difficult things. Yeah. And I always found that to be funny because it's just we can't have one without the other. Bro, in the Bible, it talks about rejoicing in difficult times mm -hmm. and how more, how it's more important to do that than it is in good times. Yeah. Right. It's so much easier to be rejoiceful and happy in good times. Right. But you need to be rejoiceful and happy and find the good in the bad times because that's when you're learning. Yeah. That's where the lessons are. That is where you get rewarded to get to the good times. Yeah. You know? So when, especially this, this time dude, or especially this, um, era, you know, of our, of our kids. Like I have, my wife's daughters are 18, 19 years old, mm -hmm. you know, they're not built the same. They're phenomenal people, dude. They're going to do just fine in society, Yeah, but they just aren't built the same as we are. Like they're not, you know, everybody is so like you, they flinch or, you know, or it's, it's like, hmm. um, and I'm not even saying my kid, these girls, cause they're strong and they, you know, they're, like I said, they're going to be good, but there's, People are soft. Yeah. You know, and it's unfortunate, man. They're taught that like they, it, you know, if you're just really nice, like you're going to get to the opposite side. No, you're not. Yeah. If you're really nice, guess what? Somebody who is nice, but also tough, they're going to fuck you up. Yeah. It's a competitive world. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's where I feel like it's like, um, I, I'm a new parent, I got a three year old and a six month old. And I'm like, I have to be hard on them almost to the point where like 
they will not resent me, but like they won't be happy in the moment, but they'll thank me later. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a, sure. it's a slippery slope because you're like, you want them to love you now, but in order for you to you in order for them to be the adults you want them to become, you have to be hard. Yeah. You have to. It's so tough, dude. It's so t- yeah. Dude, I could think about my kids right here, right now, and their feelings getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And it and it it hurts my heart. Yeah. You know, so it is tough. It is, dude. And there's oftentimes when they hit nine and you're just like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> and you have to like really stop yourself and be like, all right, they're nine. Yeah, that's cool. funny. Yeah. Well, with that, you're, this is our your first episode of Louder. Your second episode, you're going to be having two segments on with your wife and on her perspective of all of this, everything you just told me. What, what could they look forward to from listening to your wife's perspective in the next uh, couple episodes? So my wife was a single mother of triplets. She went through her whole own scenario with her husband cheating on her, and she had to come up, learn a new career. Mm. And so I wanted to bring her on to share some of that. I think you can look forward to the fact that I'm really here to present different perspectives on yeah. everything. This isn't about a man, you know, trying to, you know, prove manly points. You know, it just so happens that I am a dude. And so there are going to be a majority of men that probably relate or may be able to. It, I might be more relatable to them in mm. this type of scenario. And so yeah. I wanted to bring my wife on initially because I want females to also understand that, you know, it's, you also have a voice, you know, you also can get louder. Yeah. You also are being silenced when you're dealing with certain situations and scenarios. And so to hear another female, you know, tell that and what they've gone through and how they've navigated it was really important to me. I want people to understand that this is going to be a space where there's going to be a bunch of different guests from all different backgrounds that have gone through really, really difficult times in life. And these people have made their own decisions on how to get through it, how to mentally prepare for certain things and how to be better. Yeah, And they didn't necessarily have an opportunity to share their opinion or to share what their experience was going through this because they had to focus on getting through it. And so now maybe someone like me, I can say, hey, you know what? Let's circle back. If you want to help some people, let's talk about your situation and how you got to the other side. So that way we can give some hope to other people and help them understand that mentally you need to be tough, but there are certain steps and certain outcomes that you can actually prepare yourself for. Yeah. You don't have to just be okay with the tough times, but the tough times are coming. And they're going to come in all different shapes and sizes and scenarios, and they're never going to stop. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so this is a space for us to talk about those types of things and share those. And so that way you can hopefully take bits and pieces of how you can mentally grow yourself to understand that nobody is coming to save you. Nobody is going to change your situation from nobody's going to change your situation other than you. Yeah. And you can take control of that. So I'm looking forward to sharing a bunch of those situations and helping as many people as I can and growing that mental awareness and being able to hopefully release some inner frustration, sadness, you mm-hmm. know, maybe regret, you know, whatever it might be that you're holding in that you need to release. This is where you can do that. So that's on the next episode of Louder. I look forward to connecting with all of you guys. And thank you so much. That wraps up another empowering episode of Louder with Sean P. I want to express my gratitude for joining the conversation. Remember, your voice matters. And together, we're creating a symphony of impactful stories. If you enjoyed today's episode, I want to hear from you. Please subscribe, share, leave a review, and let's continue making some noise. Until next time, stay empowered and stay loud.